Hi everyone, this is Chris from Mr. IIoT, and in this video I want to go through the setup of Fanuc driver with uh, output to the MT Connect agent. So if you haven't seen the previous video of Fanuc driver and InfluxDB, watch that because it's going to go into depth in some other areas that I'm going to go into this one. There's no need to repeat content. Uh, as always, the documentation is docs.ladder99.com, and if you go down to uh, Fanuc Focus and then Docker, that's probably where you should start. So there's uh, pre-built images on Docker Hub. The latest one, let's see where it's at. The latest one was built two days ago, and that was after I upgraded the project from .NET Core 3.1 to .NET 6.0. Uh, both were built for AMD 64 and ARM 7, which is also going to run on ARM 8 or 64-bit version of, of uh, Ubuntu on ARM. So if we go, if we go through the documentation, um, Again, from the previous video on Influx, this is going to be the tag of the image that you want to going to want to put in here. And as you go through some of these commands, in the case of Empty Connect, you definitely want to copy this section here, which copies the generated devices XML file, so that the agent can use it. And then when you start things up, instead of specifying influx, in here you're specifying MTC, and then which is going to pull the containers, create the container, or pull the images, create the containers, and start the containers. So let's take a look at what that looks like as it's running. Um, here I have, and this is actually looking at a um, ARM 64 based PC. And we had the Fanuc driver running for a few days now with three machines outputting data, outputting shutter data to the empty connect agent. Um, you can look at the agent logs. And then if we go into the actual look at the agent output at the probe, the probe is actually the model which defines the different data types and data items that are present on our machine. So for example, on this device, let's say we go into the axes, the linear axes, and this is the X axis, right? We're gonna have the absolute position, the distance to go, machine and relative positions, uh, loads, uh, what is this? The temperature of the servo, the temperature of the encoder, uh, the power usage, feed and various alarms pertaining to that axis and also the state of the axis whether it's um, in motion or not so the data model here is the same for all the machines and the data model is generated based on the configuration file so if we go to the configuration file which is going to be uh, driver, here's the example config. So this is something that I didn't go into in the influx video, but it's worth going into in this video. Um, there, there's sections for transformers, and the transformers, what they do is they transform the incoming data into something usable by the target protocol, in this case, Shutter. Uh, in the example of Influx, there's a transformer that transforms the incoming data to line protocol, and it's using the Scriben library. It's a .NET library, kind of a templating library, but it's a pretty good standalone, uh, you know, scripting library as well. So it kind of uses the mustache syntax where you're calling out uh, in, inside of the mustache, you're calling out the actual object and its property, and then outside of the mustache syntax, you're calling out literal strings, right? So, for example, this system information veneer uh, gets 
in the case of influx, gets transformed into the observation name, which is the measurement, and then the um, tags, and then the fields, etc. If we scroll down to the MT Connect section, let's go past this real quick. Um, all right, so there's a default shutter transformer. Uh, similarly, if we look at the system info veneer, what we approach this a little bit differently, more of a as a scripting kind of interface inside the library, inside the driver. And in this case, there's some objects that are passed into the script. And then what we're doing is basically creating variables out of it. And then we have defined some functions that would emit an event, um, a sample. There's some for condition. And then there's even like conditional events. So it's just easier to kind of inline what you're trying to transform the data from to two. And shutter, if you don't know what it is, it's a pipe delimited, fairly straightforward syntax of moving data from an empty connect adapter to an empty connect agent. Of course, the agent can also accept uh, HTTP posts, but I find that this is um, uh, it's probably more efficient. So each piece of data, let's say, um, let's say the production data, every time it's collected from the focus controller, it goes through this transformation cycle and the changes get sent onto the agent. Um, and not necessarily only the changes, right? Because if the model calls out that it's a uh, discrete event, well, every single time that new data comes in, it's gonna get sent over. So that's for the transformation section. Now for the model generation section, uh, there is the default shutter model generator. And what it does when the Fanuc driver starts up and what the Fanuc driver does is based on the data that it's collecting, um, it builds the knowledge of how many axes it has, how many paths, how many axes per path, how many spindles per path, and all of the other pieces of information that are relevant. And when that model is generated upon startup, what happens in this section is that actually for every single device that is connected, it generates an XML file that then still needs to be manually stitched together. So if you have three CNCs, it's going to generate three uh, XML files, and those need to be stitched together into a proper devices.xml document. So very similar, uh, scribing script type syntax in here uh, with some helper functions like generate axes, right, where we're passing in the actual axis that we know, have knowledge of, and we generate that snippet of code, which is uh, uh, probably down here in, in axes, right? So it's a linear or a rotary axis, different XML gets generated. And if we look at on uh, the computer that I have this running on, so it's going to be stored in Fanuc, um, volumes, Fanuc driver. Um, where is it? Yeah, I don't. I forgot where it actually gets generated. Um, if I remember from my source code, I write them to. Oh, you know what? Because this is um, Linux. Uh, let's look at the configuration. I think the output file is device device.xml. But because I'm not specifying a path here, it's probably writing it to the inside the container to the app folder. Actually, we can take a look at that. Um, Docker container ls, right? So here's all the running containers. If I wanted to Docker exec into Fnuc driver, um, uh, 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 let's see. Yep, yep, there they are. So because I didn't specify a absolute path and just the path that it's currently in, it generated these files in here. All right, so we can actually cat one of these. 
device f sim xml oops cat device and xml right so it's it's the actual output um, with all the values replaced and all the different components generated out okay so that's that's good to know that it's inside of here so what you would do is you would grab those three files however many devices you might have and uh, stitch them together into a document that's kind of outside the scope of this video um, but something it, it right you can base it off the example that's already in the in the repo uh, this PC that's running actually is also running off of this configuration example and in this case we have these three guys enabled uh, the CNC simulator is local and these two guys are over VPN so if we look at the data that's coming off of these devices for example the simulator mm, right it's ready automatic uh, here's the available axes the 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 series the model and and uh, of, of, of the, the Fanuc controller, the programs that it's running, um, the different conditions, right? Everything is a normal state. If we refresh this and we can look at, we don't care about the agent device. Yeah, let's take a look at this one. What is this one doing? All right, so it's actively operating in automatic mode. It's a lathe. Here's the uh, I haven't broken out the the G code instructions into a I don't know I don't know if it should be a table or a data set yet but for now I'm kind of concatenating them all of the instructions the running instructions and putting them into the a message field for now uh, same idea here there's a program comment uh, the piece counts and uh, the tool number that's being currently used uh, conditions are normal for this then if we take a look at any one of the axes right here's a uh, axis a on path one uh, you have uh, the positional values temperature um, yeah the interesting thing I found is the actual power consumption is out output and let's see if there's anything actually spinning All right, so there's uh, yeah, 250 watts on spindle one, but it's stopped. So what does that mean? Uh, that could mean that it's not spinning, right? Where's the RPM? Power speed, okay, well, there's a speed, zero, so it's stopped. Even if, there, even if there's no, there's no load on it. So yeah, that's curious why that's 250 watts right there. Yeah, this guy's definitely spinning. Almost a thousand watts, spinning at 1200. And you can see that the X state it is traveling. So this is you're looking what you're looking at is the the current or the snapshot of what's happening right now, right? Which was whenever I refresh this page. So every time you refresh this page, um, you know if the data changed, you'll show you, you'll see different output. Um, the sample then, the sample endpoint is different from current, where it shows you the the samples and you can filter these uh, from the sequence number all right so this is from what went into the agent at this position to 205,000 all the way to to this position and these are actually all the changes right for example if you look at the um, the motor temperature all right here's the changes with the timestamps um, mm, 
What else is interesting in here? Okay. Uh, if we take a look at, let's take a look at the compose file. So the compose file And this was explained in the previous video where we're, we're breaking out these different containers by profile. So when I run influx, oh, this is going to start up. When I run empty connect, the agent is going to get start up. And this is a build of the agent. We have cross-platform builds, and I believe it's still on version 1.7. So the other point of note is that the agent connects to the driver when an empty connect right and what you have to consider here is inside of your configuration when you configure each device and you expose a port that the adapter is listening on you have to make sure that you include that port in here so I have seven eight seven eight seven nine and eight zero because the agent for every single device it's going to talk to um, the driver on each one of these ports and that's actually inside of empty connect the agent configuration right so the agent knows which ports to talk to and the driver if you look at the configuration example again if we scroll down to um, uh, here's our, our sources of data. These are the actual Fanuc machines themselves, right? Focuses on, by default, port 8193. And let's find the shutter outputs. All right, so here's the, the three shutter outputs for every one of those machines. And here's the port 7878. So the track hound empty connect shutter adapter when it starts up it's gonna listen on 7878 this one 7879 7880 and the way that these are related to the actual machines is below in say one of these machine configurations you have you calling out source one which is the the focus controller configuration and the shutter one target which is the the empty connect adapter configuration so that's it for this video uh, you can go through the previous influx video which goes into the detail about some other aspects of the driver otherwise you're following the same examples from docs.ladder99.com all right thanks for watching bye